having defined some of the important properties of uh, contour integrals and integrals of a function of a complex variable, now we can start talking about probably the most important theorem in all of complex analysis, and it is called Cauchy's theorem. And I mentioned in a previous video that Cauchy's um, name would come up a l quite a lot in complex analysis, and here you have it. Cauchy's theorem is probably the most important thing that you will learn in complex analysis, and it essentially goes like this. So, if you have a simply connected curve like this, which we sometimes call a Jordan curve, so Jordan means that we have a curve that is smooth, it is continuous, and it is non-self-intersecting. So a self-intersecting curve would be something like this, that goes through itself. So that would be non-Jordan. And it is not simply connected, but rather doubly connected because it crosses over at a specific point. And similarly, we can have a function that doesn't necessarily cross over, but it touches at a specific point like this. And this is also not simply connected. So this is another example of not a Jordan curve. And then obviously, if we have something that intersects itself more than once, then obviously that's really, really non-Jordan. So that hopefully that gives you an idea of what this whole thing about curves is going to. So Cauchy's theorem is quite powerful because it tells you that if you have a function set that is analytic within that curve Z, then or, or the curve of the region where that curve C is defined. So let's call a region something that is outside of that. Or sometimes we just call the region itself inside. So if if f of z is analytic, in C, then what we do is we know that the integral in that closed curve because it goes around is going to be equal to zero. No matter what the function is, as long as this is a, a Jordan curve, as long as it meets that condition, and as long as f is analytic, we should get zero for any function that we choose. That is analytic, of course. And just to show you what an anal analytic function is. So we already defined an analytic function as so a function that satisfies the cauchy riemann equations, but there's another way to recognize an analytic function. And it is that for any function that is defined, so let's say we have something like set to the power of n. So is this function right here analytic? Well, if we choose any, any numbers, any complex numbers that right and then we raise it to the power of n then we have another number so so yes it is analytic for for any curve c because it doesn't have any discontinuities it doesn't have any points at which it becomes undefined so what would be an example of a function that becomes undefined as at a specific point well we could have something like this one over z what's the problem with this we can put essentially any value set here except for z equals to zero because as we know, when we put z equals to zero, we get something that approaches infinity, but essentially, in mathematical terms, this is undefined. So we cannot have this point here. So this is exclusive um, of that point. So this function would be analytic except for this point here. So if we have some curve on the xy plane that somehow surrounds that singularities, this is what we call a singularity or a pole, is if the curve encloses that, then the function, this function is non-analytic within C because it has a, a singularity here. Similarly, a function that is non-analytic might have more than one singularity, so it might have something like this. So here we have two options. We can have set equals to zero would generate would make this undefined and then set equals to minus one would also make this undefined because we would be divided by zero so in such a case we would have zero and minus one so in in, in that case the function would be non-analytic because both singularities lie within that uh, curve so anything that is enclosed by the curve and is a singularity defines a non-analytic uh, function 
within that curve. And this is a really important definition to make because it allows us to simplify integration wh wherever we can as long as we know what C is. So just to give you some examples of what uh, some analytic functions are. So let's have analytic. Something like e to the power z, cosine of z, sine of z, z to the power of n, some polynomial z. All of these functions are analytic because you can put essentially any value set and you will get a well-defined value. But how about how about a function like this? So let's have some non-analytic functions. So non-analytic so long as they they have a singularity that lies within that curve. So an example would be sec of z because remember sec is just one over cosine z. So cosine actually becomes zero for any integer uh, half integer multiples of pi so in that case we would have an infinite number of singularities but of course the curve might not actually encompass all of them we might have singularities that lie outside the curve so those ones we ignore we, we care about the ones inside and if it has any singularities inside then it is non-analytic inside the curve c and then another example might be one over z n so this is another example of a non-analytic function because if we have z equal to zero, then immediately we know that we have a singularity at the origin and that's basically gonna cause problems if the curve actually goes around that point. So the main, the main uh, point about Cauchy's theorem is that if the function is analytic, then for the closed curve, we're going to get the value of zero. If the function is non-analytic, then the integral of that function within that curve c is not going to be equal to zero and we already proved this in a previous video where we solved the following example we had a curve defined as a unit circle on the complex plane so a unit circle it was a simply connected curve this is a jordan curve it is smooth and it doesn't uh, intersect itself at any points and it is closed then we had the function, we were integrating the function dz over z. So 1 over z, it has a singularity at 0. It has a singularity or pole at point 0. That's at the origin. And if you look at this, do you notice that the curve c goes around that point? So if the curve goes around it, then that means that this value cannot be 0 because 1 over z is a function that is non-analytic within the curve c. And we usually denote the closed curve as, as the integral or the loop integral like this. So this is a really important thing to uh, point out. And the really interesting thing about analytic and non-analytic functions is that for analytic functions, we can perform integration as we would normally do with real integrals. So just to give you an example of that, let's go back, uh, backtrack a little bit. Let's have erase this here. So a function that is analytic, such as z squared, dz, between any two points, 0 and 1 plus i, we can actually evaluate, we can actually evaluate it as we would with a normal integral. So we, this would be z to the power 3 over 3, from 0 to 1 plus i, and this is going to be equal to 1 over 3, 1 plus i, to the power 3, and hopefully you can figure out that this is going to be 2 over 3, plus 2 over 3i. So this function is analytic, but this is no longer a closed curve. So that's why we don't, we're not getting zero here because this is a curve between two points, zero and one plus i. And it doesn't matter what the shape of that curve is because we know that since this is analytic within C, then we're going to get a value like that. If this were a closed curve though, we would get zero here without even having to integrate it. We would know that because that's what Cauchy's theorem tells us. Similarly, we can have the following example. So let's have cosine of z, dz equals to sine z from i pi to minus i pi. And hopefully you can see here that this is going to give you the following. It's going to be 2 sine of pi i. And then this is going to be equal to 2i 
sine hyperbolic of pi and this is basically derived from what the expression we obtained in a previous video for trigonometric functions of a complex variable we obtained a, f a function that was a product of hyperbolic functions with trigonometric functions and then this value is going to be approximately equal to 23.1i so that's going to be the value of that integral and remember that it doesn't matter what shape that curve has because we know that cosine of z is analytic everywhere that it doesn't have any singularities or any poles then essentially we can evaluate it directly f by knowing the limits of the integration we, we know the the points here uh, f for the curve c so we can find that directly using regular integration because cosine of z is analytic everywhere and now uh, perhaps the the last thing that i want to talk about in this video um, regarding couch's theorem is the fact that um, this particular this really interesting thing that applies to a lot of cases so let's consider a generic region in space we're going to call this region r and let's say that we have some hole in the middle so this is going to be something like a hole that was punched in and let's say we have two curves let's say we have one curve here we're gonna call this c1 and let's say we have another curve here which we're gonna call c2 now if we evaluate an integral so let's say we evaluate a function that is analytic everywhere in r except for obviously at that point because this hole is is going to represent a singularity so um, obviously the function f of z is not going to be analytic at that particular point so what we can infer is that for c1 we're going to have for function it's going to be zero because it is going to be analytic everywhere within that curve c1 but then for two for c2 we're going to have f of z dz not equal to zero because there is going to be some singularity within that curve c2 so that's why that we should expect that not to be zero and finally what happens when you have curves that um, enclose different singularities or that happen to be within the same uh, region so let's say for example let's consider two cases let's have let's say that we have this So let's call this C1 and C2. Then what should we expect about the integral of this? Well, we should expect that the integral of both curves will be the same because if the function f of z is analytic everywhere within C2, we should expect it to be analytic everywhere within C1 as well because C1 is completely contained within C2. So we're going to have this. So this is just another consequence of Cauchy's theorem. And finally, if we have more than one hole, let's say we have two curves here, C1, C2, and then C on the outside, they're oriented in the same direction. Then we can infer that the line integral or, or actually the contour integral of that. So let's just start using this notation instead. So it's just a loop integral or a contour integral. And this is going to be equal to the sum of those two curves. So the sum of those two curves inside. Because essentially, um, those two curves are contained within C, which means that this is going to be equal to the sum. We can take the, the integral along those two curves, and then that should be the sum of them. It should be equal to this. And this is something that we will explore in the next video. We're actually going to solve a an example that illustrates this property but hopefully this video has given you some intuition as to how Cauchy's uh, theorem actually works and how it relates to integrals of, of a function of a complex variable and in the next video we're going to do some examples applying it to solve integrals